Benjamin Netanyahu, also known as Binyamin and fondly called Bibi, was born on October 21, 1949, in Tel Aviv, now Tel Aviv-Yafo, Israel. He was a respected politician and leader in Israel. He served as the country's prime minister three times, first from 1996 to 1999, then from 2009 to 2021, and he returned to office in 2022. He held this position longer than any other prime minister since Israel became independent. Netanyahu's leadership has had a significant impact on Israel's history, making him an important figure in the country's politics. In 1963, Benjamin Netanyahu and his family moved to Philadelphia, USA, where his father was a historian. He joined the Israeli military in 1967 and was part of a special unit that rescued a hijacked plane in 1972. Later, he studied at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and got his MBA in 1976. He also fought in the Yom Kippur War in 1973. Sadly, his brother Jonathan died leading a successful mission in 1976. In his memory, Benjamin started the Jonathan Institute, which organized events about terrorism. This showed his dedication to making the world safer from such threats. Netanyahu had different roles in diplomacy before he was elected to the Israeli parliament in 1988 as a member of the Likud party. He served as a deputy minister in the Foreign Affairs Ministry from 1988 to 1991 and later in Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir's government from 1991 to 1992. In 1993, he became the leader of the Likud party, succeeding Shamir. During his time as leader, Netanyahu strongly opposed the peace agreement between Israel and Palestine in 1993, as well as the Israeli pullout from the West Bank and Gaza Strip that followed. His strong stance on these issues made him a notable figure in Israeli politics, showing his determination as a leader. In the 1996 elections, the Labour Party faced difficulties due to the tragic assassination of Yitzhak Rabin in 1995 and attacks by militants in 1996. Despite this, Benjamin Netanyahu won by a small margin of about 1% over Prime Minister Shimon Peres on May 29, 1996. These elections were the first where the Prime Minister was directly chosen by the people. Netanyahu became the youngest person to be Israel's Prime Minister when he formed the government on June 18. During Netanyahu's first term as Prime Minister, there was a lot of unrest. Soon after he took office, problems arose with Syria. In 1996, his decision to open a tunnel near Al-Aqsa Mosque angered Palestinians and led to intense fighting. Despite earlier objections, Netanyahu agreed to withdraw troops from most of the West Bank town of Hebron in 1997 due to international pressure. However, there were disagreements within his own government, leading to plans for new Jewish settlements on land claimed by Palestinians. He also reduced the amount of land intended for Palestinian control during Israel's next withdrawal from the West Bank, which led to violent protests and bombings. In 1998, Netanyahu and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat had peace talks that resulted in the Y Memorandum. This agreement suggested giving up to 40% of the West Bank to Palestinian control. However, some groups in Israel disagreed with this, causing factions to leave Netanyahu's government. As a result, in 1998, the government was dissolved, and new elections were set for May 1999. Netanyahu faced challenges during his re-election campaign. His problems included a divided right-wing support base and dissatisfaction among voters due to his inconsistent peace policies and aggressive style. Additionally, his government was marred by scandals, including the controversial appointment of Roni Ba'on, a Likud party member, as attorney general in 1997. Accusations that Ba'on might help a Netanyahu ally facing charges led to confidence votes in the Knesset. With his main political backing weakened, Netanyahu lost the 1999 elections to Ehud Barak, the leader of the Labour Party. After Netanyahu stepped down as the head of Likud in 1999, Ariel Sharon took over. But Netanyahu remained respected in the party. In 2001, when early elections were called, Netanyahu couldn't run for prime minister as he had resigned from the Knesset. Even though he challenged Sharon for party leadership, he didn't succeed. During Sharon's time in power, Netanyahu served as foreign minister from 2002 to 2003 and as finance minister from 2003 to 2005. 
In 2005, Sharon left Likud and created a new party called Kadima. Netanyahu then became the leader of Likud. However, in the 2006 Knesset elections, Likud only got 12 seats while Kadima got 29, so Netanyahu's party couldn't form the government. In the elections held in February 2009, under Netanyahu's leadership, Likud made significant progress, winning 27 seats in the Knesset, just one seat less than Kadima, led by Zip Livni. However, the results were very close, and it wasn't immediately clear who would be asked to form the government. After several days of discussions, Netanyahu secured support from Israel Beitenu, 15 seats, Sahas, 11 seats, and some smaller parties. Consequently, he was invited by Israel's president to form the government, and it officially took office on March 31, 2009. In June 2009, Netanyahu, for the first time, said he was open to the idea of an independent Palestinian state. But he had some conditions. The Palestinian state shouldn't have a military, and it should officially recognize Israel as a Jewish state. However, Palestinian leaders didn't agree to these conditions. There were some talks in 2010, but they stopped when Israel ended a 10-month pause on building settlements in the West Bank, and they didn't extend it. As a result, there was no progress in the peace process during the rest of Netanyahu's term. Netanyahu was very firm in international matters. He urged the world to take strong action against Iran's nuclear program, which he saw as a big threat to Israel's safety and global peace. He also worried about the Arab Spring in 2011, where many Arab countries saw uprisings. Netanyahu thought the new leaders might not be friendly to Israel, making him concerned about the region's stability. In his own country, Netanyahu had to deal with increasing unhappiness among the middle class and young people about the economy. In 2011, there were big protests across Israel. People were upset about the differences in society and asked the government to improve services like transportation, education, child care, and housing. The next year, there were issues within his government. They couldn't agree on military service exemptions for some religious Jews. These problems led to early elections in 2012 after the government couldn't decide on a budget, making things even more challenging for Netanyahu's leadership. In the January 2013 elections, Netanyahu was elected as the prime minister again, but this time he led a group of parties that seemed more moderate compared to his earlier coalition. A new political force led by Yesh Atid, a party formed by media mogul Yair Lapid, gained strength. Yesh Atid focused on the middle class issues that were central to the 2011 protests. Meanwhile, a partnership between Likud and Israel Beitenu won the most seats in the Knesset in 2013 but didn't meet expectations. After discussions that lasted several weeks, Netanyahu managed to make a deal between Likud Israel Beitenu, Yair Lapid's Yesh Atid, Livni's Hatnoa party, and a few smaller parties. This collaboration formed the new government, marking a move toward a more centrist approach in Israeli politics. In July 2014, Netanyahu ordered a big military operation in the Gaza Strip because of rocket attacks on Israel. After 50 days, he said they had significantly reduced the militant's ability to launch rockets, but many people criticized the operation because a lot of Palestinians were hurt. By the end of 2014, there were disagreements within the government about money matters and a lot about Israel being a Jewish state. In December, Netanyahu removed Livni and Lapid from the cabinet, and this led to early elections in March 2015. This change marked a significant shift in Israeli politics. In 2014, Netanyahu and US President Barack Obama had more problems in their relationship. This happened because Netanyahu criticized Obama's plan to deal with Iran's nuclear issue through talks. Netanyahu believed that this approach would let Iran make nuclear weapons eventually. He thought keeping sanctions on Iran was a better idea than negotiating. This disagreement made their relationship even more difficult. In January 2015, as Israel's elections were nearing, Netanyahu was invited to speak before the US Congress about Iran, and he did so on March 3. However, this invitation caused a lot of controversy. It was unusual because it was given by the Speaker of the House of Representatives without informing the White House, which is not the usual way of doing things when leaders visit. Also, many people expected Netanyahu to criticize the Obama administration during his speech. 
people in both Israel and the United States said that by openly supporting the opponents of the sitting president, Netanyahu was risking the strong bipartisan support that Israel had in the United States. Before the March 17th election, experts thought it would be a close fight between Netanyahu's Likud party and the Zionist Union, which included the Labour Party and Hatnoa. When the results came out, it was clear that Likud had won the most seats in the Knesset with 30, beating the Zionist Union, which had 24 seats. This was a surprising and clear victory for Likud. During Netanyahu's fourth term, there were four investigations going on about bribery and corruption involving him and his close associates. In February 2018, the police found enough evidence to suggest charges of bribery and fraud in two cases. In one case, Netanyahu was accused of accepting expensive gifts like cigars and jewelry in exchange for political favors. His rival, Lapid, became an important witness here. In another case, he was alleged to have sought positive media coverage by limiting a competitor's circulation. In a third case, charges were recommended against people close to Netanyahu for bribery in a submarine deal, although Netanyahu himself wasn't directly involved. In the fourth case in December, charges were suggested, claiming that Netanyahu favored a telecom company in exchange for positive media coverage. The Attorney General promised to review these cases together to decide whether to charge him. These investigations created significant concerns about his leadership during his term. Initially, Netanyahu's political allies supported him despite the allegations. However, due to policy disagreements, their support weakened. In November, a truce was agreed upon with Hamas after intense fighting. This led to Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman resigning and his party withdrawing from the coalition. By December, there were disagreements over conscription exemptions for Haredi individuals. As a result, the Knesset was dissolved, and early elections were scheduled for April 2019. This period marked significant political instability in Israeli politics. For the first time in Israel, there were three rounds of elections before a new government could be formed. Surprisingly, this delay wasn't mainly because of concerns about Netanyahu's corruption charges but due to a drop in support for his policies. Just six weeks before the elections, on February 28, Israel's Attorney General announced that he would pursue charges against Netanyahu for bribery, fraud, and breach of trust, pending a hearing. Despite these charges, Netanyahu's party did well in the elections, indicating he might be the Prime Minister again. However, forming a government became difficult as potential partners couldn't agree on certain issues, especially conscription rules. So, new elections were held in September, but similar results led to another deadlock, and a coalition government still couldn't be formed. This prolonged period of uncertainty created political instability in Israel. In March 2020, just before his trial started, Israel had its third set of elections. Netanyahu's party, Likud, gained a lot due to a strong campaign, but he still didn't have enough support to form a government. With support from the Joint List, a party representing Palestinian citizens of Israel, Benny Gantz, a retired army general, was given the chance to form a government. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Gantz agreed to work with Netanyahu and created a unity government. They signed a deal on April 20, stating that Gantz would become the leader after 18 months. This decision was made to handle the challenges caused by the pandemic. The emergency unity government, formed to handle the COVID-19 crisis, faced internal issues and was criticized for how it managed the pandemic. During this time, Netanyahu's popularity dropped due to controversies over lockdowns and economic decisions. His corruption trial also started, adding to his challenges. Meanwhile, the United States helped Israel make agreements with Arab countries, but Netanyahu's problems continued. By the end of 2020, the unity government couldn't agree on a budget for 2021, so the Knesset, Israel's parliament, was dissolved. In March 2021, new elections were held. Despite a successful COVID-19 vaccination drive, Netanyahu and his allies couldn't get enough seats in the Knesset. In June, a new coalition was formed with Naftali Bennett as the Prime Minister, ending Netanyahu's time as the Prime Minister. This was a big change in Israeli politics, marking the end of Netanyahu's long leadership. In early 2022, there was a big problem in Netanyahu's corruption trial. 
It came out that the police had used spyware to hack the phones of some trial witnesses, causing delays in the proceedings and making people doubt the trial's fairness. In May, Netanyahu's defense team proved that a key meeting mentioned by the prosecution couldn't have occurred on the date stated in the charges. This raised further doubts about the allegations related to Bazek, making the case weaker. As the leader of the opposition, Netanyahu took a strong stand against the ruling coalition. In April, when a key member of the coalition switched sides, leaving the Knesset equally divided at 60 to 60, Netanyahu encouraged more defections to weaken Bennett's government. In June, he told his party to vote against renewing an emergency rule, in place since 1967, allowing Israeli settlements in the West Bank to be governed locally instead of under military control. The renewal was rejected, causing potential legal chaos. This forced Bennett to dissolve the Knesset, allowing emergency rules to continue until new elections could form a government. Netanyahu's moves displayed his determination to challenge the ruling coalition's stability. In the November elections, Israel saw the highest voter turnout since 1999, with strong support for the right-wing bloc. Netanyahu returned to power, forming a controversial coalition that included far-right ministers. However, the High Court of Justice cancelled the appointment of one minister due to his suspended sentence. This decision added momentum to the coalition's plans to control the judiciary, potentially affecting Netanyahu's corruption trial, by changing the country's basic laws. These changes in 2023 sparked widespread strikes and protests in Israel. Many, including thousands of army reservists, were concerned about the balance of power. In August, top military officials warned lawmakers that the readiness of the Israel Defense Forces IDF, for war had begun to decline, raising worries about the nation's security. The October 7, 2023, attack by Hamas marked the deadliest day in Israel since its independence. The coordinated assault, involving land, sea, and air operations, resulted in the tragic loss of at least 1,400 lives and the capture of around 200 individuals. This well-planned attack caught the Israeli defense establishment off guard, leading to widespread questions among Israelis about the government's lack of preparedness. In response, Netanyahu included Benny Gantz from the opposition in his emergency cabinet. This move aimed to strengthen the cabinet's military expertise and reduce Netanyahu's reliance on far-right ministers in wartime decision-making. Benjamin Netanyahu, through his time as Israel's prime minister, has deeply influenced the country and the world. His decisions on security, diplomacy, and technology have shaped Israel's path. His legal challenges also led to important discussions about honesty in politics. His speeches and online presence have stirred debates, impacting public views in Israel and globally. His policies on issues like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict have influenced how the world sees Israel. Netanyahu's leadership has sparked many conversations and debates, both in Israel and around the world.